right, but Sean, it is raining outside. Yes. I got caught in the rain. Yes. Oh, yes. I don't know if it's in time for my grass, though. Your dirt needs it. Good morning. And Mr. DeLeon, this is a motion, correct? Yes, it is, Your Honor. All right. Do you happen to have a copy of your motion? Sure do. Thank you. It's a motion to amend conditions of the bond, Your Honor. Okay. He's on a GPS monitor. All right. State, are you ready to proceed on this? Uh, I just have one second to pull out. Okay, sure. He's just asking that the GPS monitor be removed. He's yeah. currently on tracking. Yes, and you can be opposed to it. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, I talked to Brittany Mitchell yesterday and she said she wouldn't be opposed to it. Okay. All right. Uh, Dine, are you ready? Court is calling 2022 CR 10364, State of Texas versus Christopher Lee Gonzalez. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Ruben Herrera for the state. Defense? Michael drill down for Mr. Christopher Gonzalez. All right, we're here on a motion to amend conditions of bond. State, are you ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. All right, defense is your motion. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Gonzalez has been on a GPS monitor for two years. The allegations, which we highly dispute, um, involve a teenage child that lives in his neighborhood. There's no family relationship. Mr. Gonzalez has since moved from that neighborhood uh, the child, we, I, I, if I'm correct, doesn't even live in that neighborhood anymore. So he has never had any other contact with this alleged complainant. Um, and in the past two years, he's had no violations while he's on his GPS monitor. So um, we believe it's not necessary to have it. It's a burden on him to have that uh, GPS monitor. Uh, as the court is aware, I was appointed to this case about six weeks ago. And um, we believe we're respectfully asking that the GPS monitor be removed and no contact order obviously remain in place. And um, me and Ms. Mitchell are continuing to confer. All right. And what's the burden for having a GPS tracking? The burden is, you know, number one, just the cost of it. But additionally to that, it's been on his ankle. He's complained to me that it's, you know, very painful for him to have it on uh, his ankle for, and it's been for two years. And uh, here, I believe that there's just no danger to any uh, alleged complainant and, or the community. And he's demonstrated after the past two years that he's never had any issues. All right, state. Mr. Adam, uh, state would be opposed to, the defendant is charged with aggravated sexual assault, of, uh, aggravated sexual assault of a child. Um, the child is cooperative in this case. Um, and given the severity of the charge, Your Honor, we believe the defendant presents a danger to uh, the community and asks that at the very least, tracking GPS be um, continued he, in, in order to be able to monitor the location of the defendant while the charge is All right. So, how is he? I mean, I understand the nature of the charge, but how is he necessarily a danger to, to community? Because every then everybody who's charged with a criminal offense technically would be a danger to the community. And then everybody should be on GPS if they have a criminal charge. Your Honor, it's alleged that there was no, that the, the child victim was a stranger to the defendant. That he approached the defendant and asked for sexual favors in exchange for cash to a complete stranger. Uh, so given that relationship, Your Honor, that's, that's the basis of the state's objection. But the purpose of a GPS monitor is to make sure that he has no contact with the complainant or the complainant's area. This is a strange stranger relationship, Your Honor. Uh, of course, you know, we, we dispute the allegations, but um, there's been no danger to this complainant. There's no danger to the community. And it's been two years he's demonstrated that he will do everything the court has asked him to do. No violations at all. Any violations, state? Not that I'm aware of. All right. So, Mr. Gonzalez, yes, yes, sir. if you do a drug test today, what are the results going to be? Please. All right, let's do a drug test. Please. All right. That's good. Thank you, Your Honor. Sure. Uh, additionally, before he's got an actual setting on Tuesday of next week, Your Honor. So mm -hmm. eventually, I'm going to ask the court 
that he not come back next Tuesday, me and Ms. Mitchell are continuing to confer. And uh, my belief is the state's gonna be talking to their complainant sometime this week or maybe next week. And that that will help them with the process of, of what we're uh, conferring on. FYI. All right. All right, so take care of that for me and then we'll come back and I'll make a decision on your motion. All right. Thank you. All right. Who are the, uh, could I see a family violence prosecutor? All right, my understanding is that with regards to this case, there is gonna be, someone was gonna look into whether or not mental health court would accept him? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, and? Let, let me check on the script. Your Honor, the, the, he did go through the evaluation process. Um, he was accepted into the program. He was going to be housed, however, um, or staffed, as they say, staffed. The I, I believe the the district attorney's office did not accept the the um, the case being moved to mental health court. That's my understanding, Your Honor. All right. I believe that's correct. All right. I don't know why they wouldn't accept you in the mental health court and you have mental health issues, but thank you. They don't tell me a reason why they rejected you. They're just like rejected. I guess sometimes when they think things are hard case, they're like, we're not going to work with it because they didn't give me a reason why they rejected you. So, uh, Mr. Uh, Torres Rivera, you have a plea bargain agreement with the state where they're offering you deferred adjudication. So I guess I'm gonna have to work with it, all right? Yes, Your Honor. So it's calling 2023-CR-0789, State of Texas versus one Carlo Torres Rivera. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? For the state. Defense? Armando Roman, Your Honor, for the defense. And Mr. Torres Rivera, if you can unmute yourself, please. All right. And Mr. Roman, are you able to show your video or no? Your Honor, I I, I have it as showing, um, but I don't know why it's blacked out. I, I don't know if it's a problem with my camera. Um, all right, let me stop your video on this end and then see, then request that you restart it. Oh, do you have the slide on the top? No. No. Are the cam are you on a computer or a phone? Computer. Uh, do you have the camera that you press down in the top and then it pops up? No. Yeah, he doesn't have any of that. We've we've reached the limit of our skills. All right. Any objection to Armando Ramon appearing by video? No objection. Any objection to his client appearing by video? No objection. Any objection to Mr. Ramon not having his video up? No objection. All right. So according to the plea bargain agreement that you entered into on July 11th, it was to a misdemeanor assault injury family violence household you entered a plea of no contest the state is recommending deferred adjudication uh anything you wish to say on behalf of your client no your honor state uh nothing no. nothing from the state your honor. all right probation no, your honor. <laughs> I, I threw you off right <laughs> by asking you because i now we're going to have to figure out what we can what services we can provide uh for mr torres because obviously he has mental health issues mr torres can you raise your right hand for me please you solemnly swear from the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth so help you god all right lord you can lower your hand and make sure you keep your voice up so the court reporter can hear could you state your name for the record uh, mr rivera do you have a place to live if you were released today Yes, ma'am. Where would you be? Well, who would you be living with? With my mom. All right. Does your mom want you living with her? Yes, ma'am. Have you asked? Yes, ma'am. 
All right. Who else is in the household other than your mother? My two, uh, my two brothers. And how old are they? 120, 115. 20 and 15? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any children? No, ma'am. What's your mental health diagnosis? Um, I understand that, ma'am. Well, what are people saying your mental health is? My mom, my, my, my dad told me that uh, I need help. And my mom too. So. No, I mean, are you bipolar? Or is somebody saying you bipolar? Are they saying you're schizophrenic? What are they saying? No, I said the, the anxiety and depression. Have you ever been employed? Uh, yeah, just yes, ma'am. Uh, doing what? Uh, do, uh, do her. I'm sorry, what? Do her. Okay. What does that mean? You haul, your honor. I mean, what does that mean? Uh, cleaning, cleaning storage. I'm sorry, what? Doing storage? Yes, ma'am. Okay, what do you do with storage? Cleaning. How far did you go in school? To, to uh, graduate. All right, any other questions from anyone? Not from the state. Mr. Ramon, any questions? No questions, Ron. All right, I'll send it you to two years deferred adjudication. Affirmative finding of family violence. There's to be no contact with Ortiz, anger management, probation. If you could do a referral to Center for Healthcare Services, proof of employment within 30 days. There's to be no employment as a home health care provider with minors. There's to be no unsupervised contact with minors. Regular reporting by Zoom or in person. Regular UAs. Field visits. And the field visits will be in place until he gets a case manager from Center for Healthcare Services. So there'll be field visits one time every two months. Probation, is there anything else? Can we do a paper call? Yes. And a uh, MIC referral. All right. Uh, did you want that in custody or out of custody? All right. That'll be a MIC referral out of custody. Mr. Rivera, if you do not make these appointments, what's going to end up happening is a warrant could be issued for your arrest. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. Is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? No, ma'am. I'm sorry? No, ma'am. All right. Did you review the document entitled Trial Court Certification of Defendants? Rights to appeal with your attorney. Yes, ma'am. All right. Good luck to you. I am going to place you in breakout room number one, uh, Mr. Rivera. From here on out, communication is very important. If you have a question about something, if you feel probation is not addressing that, you can always come to the court. You understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. I'm going to move you to breakout room uh, number one. Your Honor, if I may bring something up. I just want to clarify something. Yes. Um, you mentioned no contact with, I thought it was no harmful or injurious contact with, because that's his mom. No, in the plea bargain agreement, there is no contact with her. If you would like that to be lifted, then she'll need to zoom in or come into court and I'll need to ha have a conversation with her. But your plea okay. bargain agreement is for no contact. Okay, Your Honor, we'll all do right. that. All right, I'll move you all to breakout room number one.
Thank you, Your Honor. After that, Your Honor, may I be excused? Yes, you can be excused from the breakout room. Thank you, Your Honor. State of Texas versus Rodolfo Aceves. 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 Could I have parties announced for the record for the state? Miranda Carrillo for the state of Texas. And Johnny Cisnero for Mr. Aceves. Are you Mr. Aceves? Me, si, mi jurado. Si, mi jurado. Yes, Your Honor. All right, we have an interpreter here. Could you raise your right hand? Do you solemnly swear or affirm that you will faithfully translate from Spanish into English and English into Spanish? So help you God. I do, Your Honor. All right, you can lower your hand if you'll state your name for the record. Carmen Tarragon Nazaz. Thank you. All right, we are here for sentencing the defendant in a plea of no contest to count one and count two. The court found there was sufficient evidence to find him guilty. According to the plea bargain agreement, punishment is to be assessed at a cap of 10 years in the prison. There's a thousand dollar fine and the state opposes the defendant's applications. Have both parties had a chance to review the PSI report? State? Yes, Your Honor. Defense? Yes, Your Honor. Any objections to the PSI report? State? No, Your Honor. Defense? No. All right. Uh, state, do you have any witnesses? Yes, Your Honor. I, first, I do have state's exhibits one and two, which are just images that I'd like to provide. Defense has seen them. Any objections? No objections, Your Honor. All right. State's exhibits one and two are admitted into evidence. Your Honor. And at this time, the state would call Matt Porter. All right, Matt Porter. You raise your right hand. You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth. So help you God. Yes, ma'am. All right, you can lower your hand. State your name for the record. Uh, Matthew Porter. All right, state. Thank you, Mr. Porter, could you introduce yourself to the judge, who you are and what you do? I'm a sergeant with the San Antonio Police Department, uh, currently working at Fusion Center. I've been assigned there for two years and I've been on the department for 22 years. Okay. And briefly, can you explain what the Fusion Center is and what your job is there? It's the, uh, I'm sorry. All right. Could you uh, make sure you keep your voice up? Yes, ma'am. All right. So it's a, uh, essentially a real-time watch center. We watch out for any uh, threats of mass targeted violence, uh, any threats to citizens. Uh, once we we're made aware of these threats, we begin to work them and support uh, follow-up units. What kind of training do you receive to do that? So we go to various training. Uh, one of the trainings uh, is through the FBI called Making Prevention a Reality. And it's a program uh, dedicated to stopping uh, threats of mass targeted violence. And how did you come to be involved in that? Just one second. So I always try to make people's job as easy as possible. So I can hear the interpreter interpreting. So once he answers the question, if you hear silence from the interpreter, it will make her job so much easier if you will then ask your next question, because otherwise it's yes quick yes. for her. Okay. okay. Sorry. How did you come to be involved in Rodolfo Aceves? Uh, this threat was. Okay, listen to her. Yes, all right. Uh, the threat was uh, brought to our team and we began uh, working with homicide on this case. And why, why was it brought to you? Uh, there was. Why was it a case that was black it, for you? It was a threat of uh, mass targeted violence. So there was people that uh, reported it to police that were concerned for their, their well being and the well being of others. And what did you look at when it was brought to you? What were there any flags or anything that made you research further? So once we received this, the threat, we started looking into it. Um, and there were uh, behavioral indicators uh, by the defendant that caused uh, a lot of alarm. And as we began to dig deeper, um, we saw uh, indicators that, hey, he is on the pathway to violence and that um, it's more than it's more than like mere preparation. He's, uh, there was leakage uh, to coworkers. Uh, there was a fixation on paths. Uh, mass targeted violence incidents, incidents such as Uvalde and Columbine. Um, there was the purchase of firearms, the practicing on using these firearms. So when our team started looking at this, uh, it, it was very concerning. And when you say leakage to coworkers, what do you mean by that? 
there was an incident at his place of employment uh, where I believe a firearm, a fire alarm went off and he made a comment to a fellow coworker that this would be a good time to conduct a, a mass shooting. Having seen these flags, what were your actions after that? Well, initially that statement alone is one thing, but when you put that together with everything else that we saw, uh, it, it was certainly alarming uh, from our standpoint and for uh, public safety. In your job, do you see or evaluate a lot of these situations? Yes, ma'am. And are there some that you see as mere statements and others that you see as you mentioned earlier statements plus yes we could we take each one seriously and we look at the totality of the circumstances in each case that's brought to us um, and in some cases it's just a comment and we're able to uh we're able to see that pretty early on uh this particular case that wasn't uh that wasn't the circumstances that we found and it, it was just very concerning do you remain involved in uh, the Rodolfo the Osibis case? Yes, um, we do. And what does that entail? Just follow ups with uh, family, uh, making sure there's no other uh, criminal activity that's been taking place with him that would uh, bring concern to us and to public safety. I have no more questions. Here. Depends. How many people reported this to Amazon? I would have to go back and look. I don't have that in front of me. Well, you've been involved a lot in the last year and a half. You just testified that you've been really looking into him. And the first question I have, you don't have an answer for? Okay, but that's okay. So uh, did you speak to Mr. Nate Fisher? Who was a supervisor at the time? I did not. Did you speak to the person that he allegedly told that uh, he was going to shoot uh, Amazon? I did not. Did you talk to any other witnesses? I did not. How many times have you spoken to the family members? I have not spoken to the family. How many times have you spoken to my client? I have not spoken to your client. What kind of investigation did you do? Um, I didn't do the investigation. I'm the supervisor over the investigators. So. They went so out what you're it. telling, excuse me for interrupting. No, no, go ahead, sir. So what you're telling me is all hearsay. Based on my detective's reports, yes. Okay, and do you have any reports with you that I, I can review? I do not. You said that, uh, what, well, when did he purchase his rifle? Did he already have it or did he purchase it after he made that comment? I don't, I don't have those details. So do you know if you purchase a weapon so you could go kill people or did, or if you were just purchasing it just to target you or just to have it? I can't answer that question. I don't have any more questions, though. Just brief reader, yes. just to clarify, um, you were not involved in the investigation of this case. Correct. Correct. You work for the fusion unit, which monitors these sorts of potential threats after the fact. Yeah, correct? we manage uh, threats of mass targeted things. Uh, no more questions. I, I have another question or two. Do you know that Mr. Osevis has been on house full house arrest for, oh, let me see, 12, almost 15, 16 months? Yes, sir. And, and how many violations has he had? None to my knowledge. And that is correct. Just so you'll know. <laughs> so first question I had that you had a good answer for. <laughs> uh, so knowing that that he's had no violations at all in almost 16, 17 months, doesn't that give you a different perspective of Mr. Osevis? Well, you can look at it two ways that um, the mitigation we put in place worked and that we got them off that pathway to violence or you have to look at it as is this is he just behaving to get through this um, and that's all right if you could repeat that please you can look at it two ways that the, the and i'm sorry just one second if you could 
not turn towards him. The only reason why I'm saying that is because she needs to hear you. Understood, yes, ma'am. Uh, the, the reason for that could be that the, the mitigations we put in place worked and got him off the pathway to violence, or uh, you, you could look. You could also look at it as he's just trying to get through this time in his life uh, to get past this charge. You agree with me, do you not, that a piece of paper does not stop someone from killing people? Yeah, I agree with that. Yes, sir. And a piece of paper, we, we could refer to that as a uh, the bond paper. Correct. And if he really intended to go out and kill people, he would have already left and gone and do something like this, right? Just the fact that he would be granted uh, deferred adjudication, hopefully, that, that, does that mean that he's going to go violate that? I can't answer that. Okay, no more questions. Then. All right, any other questions? All right, counsel, is there some documentation that you wanted from this witness that you have not received? No, ma'am, I'm, I'm just wondering why he's here. I mean, uh, he, he talks about how bad my client is, and yet when I ask him any question, he doesn't know anything about it. All right, so there's no documentation that he has that you have not received not that you would knowledge. like? Excuse me. No, no. Not to my knowledge, Your Honor. All right, did you want to ask him about any documentation he has? I, I, do you have any documentation that I... Just my just my detective's reports. And have you turned those over to the district attorney's office? I believe they've been turned over. Okay. The case. Yes, they, they could be part of my discovery, Your Honor, but that I've seen in discovery, there's nothing that alarming to me. All right, do you know if he's received his report? Yes, it should all be uploaded in e-discovery. All right, all right, thank you so thank much you. for coming now. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> all right state call your next witness all right, state has no more witnesses all right defense do you have any witnesses uh yes i have mr rolfo service senior you know all right if you'll call him to come forward yes <laughs> no you're doing double duty all right could you raise your right hand for me do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth so help you God? Yes, Your Honor. All right, you can lower your hand if you'll state your name for the record. Rodolfo Valdivia Perez. Rodolfo Valdivia Perez. Okay. Mr. Perez. Oh, just one second. So do you need to speak so he can understand the questions? Oh, okay. I mean, because he, he understands English, but you, you can say it out loud so he can hear. Okay. okay. All right. You can ask your questions. Mr. Perez, what is your relationship to Rodolfo Aceves? It's me. He's my son. And has he ever been in trouble before? Nunca. Never. He'd never been arrested for any misdemeanors? Nunca. Never. Has he ever been arrested for any felonies? Nunca. Never. Has he ever been in a fighting school? No, okay, sir. Not that I know of. Has he ever been in a fight in the neighborhood? Not that either. Has he threatened you or, or any of your family members? No, I'm not here. No, nobody. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit about your son, please? Uh, it'll probably go a little faster. Uh, can you repeat the question, please? Oh, can you please tell me something about your son? Tell the court something about your son so we can know who your son is. Siempre ha sido normal, un buen hijo. He's always been normal, a good son. Nosotros, uh, como papá y mamá, les hemos tratado de llevar a buen camino. Uh, as a mom and dad, we have tried to guide them the, the right way, the right path. Jamás hemos tenido ningún, habíamos tenido ningún problema de nada. We had never had any kind of problem before. Todo fue una sorpresa para nosotros. A él le gusta bromear mucho. Ah, uh, this was a surprise to us. He likes to joke a lot. He, 
Does he suffer from depression? Tuvo un tiempo con depresión y ansiedad. He was depressed and, and anxious for a while. So uh, you, you're telling us that he has, he suffers from anxiety also? Estuvo un tiempo con eso. Uh, eso vino de ayudándome a trabajar. Uh, uh, absorbió cloro. Uh, olio. Yeah, that, he had that for a, for a while. He helped me at work and he smelled chlorine. And that affected his life? Un, un tiempo estuvo con ansiedad por ese motivo uh, for a while he creyó had que le iba a hacer eh, mal uh, he, for a while he had anxiety due to that because he thought it was going to harm him do you think that your son would be a good candidate to successfully complete a probationary period should the court give him deferred adjudication which is another term for probation 100%. 100%. Now, to your knowledge, has he violated any conditions of his pretrial release? No, nada. Y cuida mucho eso. Me preocupa mucho. No, nothing at all. And he's very concerned about that. And he has been restricted to full house arrest, has he not? Sí. Yes. 100%. And are you asking her honor to grant your son deferred adjudication and that you will help him successfully complete the probationary period? Sí, de mi corazón. Yes, from the bottom of my heart. I pass away, Mr. Acevedo. Mr. Acevedo, hi, my name is Miranda. I'm one of the assistant district attorneys. I just have a few questions for you. Were you aware that your son had firearms in his room at your residence? Sí, sir. Yes, I did know. Do you know when he purchased those firearms? Cuando cumplió 18, que la podía comprar legalmente. When he turned 18 and he could purchase them legally. Was that close to the time that this incident happened? No, fue mucho antes. No, it was way before. What would you say way before that be months or years? No estoy muy seguro. No años. I'm not too sure, but not years. He, when this incident occurred, he was around 18 years old, still correct? Uh, como 19. Like 19, I believe. Okay. You mentioned that your son likes to joke a lot. What did you think about the statement that he made to his coworkers? That it was a joke. Did you find it to be a joke? No. No. I have no more questions, Your Honor. Defense, any questions? Did you find this, uh, and we spoke about it several times before, and I think the term that you used to me, and correct me if I'm wrong, that you found it to be stupid of what he said. Do you still feel that way? Uh, see, see. Yeah. Yes, yes. And in fact, that's what you told me when you first hired me, did you not? Correct. Correct. And you, you forgot to tell the prosecutor that because you're you didn't want to tell her, or you're just nervous, and you, or you just forgot. Maybe I'm nervous. No more questions. Any further questions? I don't. Uh, I have a question. If there are no objections. No objections. How far did your son go in school? I'm no reading master. the report that says ninth grade. Sí, yo creo que sí. La, yes, la mam so. su mamá es la que más se dedica con. Uh, the mom is the one who's more in charge of that. All right, why didn't he finish school? Quería trabajar, quería. He wanted to work, he wanted to. 
So you allowed him not to be in school at ninth grade? Le sugerimos que se quedara en la escuela. We suggested to him todos, to stay in school. Todos están en la, los nuestros hijos en la escuela. All our children are in school. Except for him? Sí, excepto él que porque quería trabajar. Yes, except him because he wanted to work. Oh. All right, I have no further questions. No more questions. No, no more questions. No. All right, thank you. Yes. I told Ms. Mercedes Aceves. And does she need an interpreter as well? Yes, you are. Let me ask her. Excuse me. Uh, if you come up here, sir. Do you need an interpreter, sir? Uh, only. Uh, just to speak, Your Honor. All right. So, are you able to understand the questions that are being asked in English? Yes, Your Honor. And are you able to understand the answers that are being given in English? Yes, Your Honor. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. So, then, uh, sir, I'm sorry if you'll step back there. And that will make it easier for the interpreter. Can you raise your uh, defense? Can you call your next witness? Ms. Mercedes Aceves, Your Honor. What's the first name? Mercedes. All right. Mercedes. Could, thank you. Could you raise your right hand for me? Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. Yes, I swear. All right. You can lower your hand. Defense. Ms. Aceves. What is your relationship to Rodolfo Aceves Jr.? Su madre, soy madre de I am Rodolfo's mother. And it's come to our attention that your son suffers from depression and anxiety. Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat? I got confused. It, it has come to our attention that your son suffers from depression and anxiety. Is that correct? Correct. Has that depression and or anxiety ever caused him to threaten to kill anyone? No. No. Has it caused him to threaten to hurt anyone? No. No. Has your son been a good boy all his life? See. Yes. Tell me a little bit, uh, and tell the court, please, a little bit about your son so the judge can understand what kind of a young man she's looking at. And instead of my asking you questions, just give the short version of your son's life, and it'll go a little bit faster now. Sí, yo puedo mencionar que él siempre ha sido respetuoso. I can mention that he has always been respectful. Con su padre, su madre, sus hermanos. Towards his father, his mother, his siblings. En su escuela nunca tuve queja de que respetara a algún maestro o algún alumno. When he was in school, I never had a complaint that he disrespected a teacher or a student. Es, es muy buen hijo conmigo, siempre me ayuda. He's a very good son to me. He always helps me out. <laughs> I don't know what else. Does he live with you right now? Yes. Okay. Do you know he has been under full house arrest for the last 17 months, 16 and a half, 17 months? And has he violated any of those conditions or orders from the court? No, siempre respetado el estar ahí en su domicilio. No, he's always respected being there at home. No more questions. Any questions? Yes, quickly, Hi, ma'am. Um, my name is Miranda. I'm a assistant district of the state. Just have a couple of questions for you. Yes. Are you aware of what your son is uh, being charged with here today? No, not exactly. Mm -hmm. Are you aware? I don't know how serious it is. Okay. Uh, 
And are you familiar with what he's being accused of doing at his cross at the Amazon for us? Let's see. Yes. How do you feel about that? Me preocupa. O sea, lo que que fue una 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 palabra que nos se entendió de otra forma. Uh, I'm worried that it was a word that was understood in a different way. Pero yo sé que en su corazón y en sus planes no está hacer daño a nadie. But I know that in his heart, in his plans, there, there, it's not in him to harm anybody. And do you know that he had firearms, uh, that he owned firearms in his room in your home? Sí. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you know when he purchased those? Pues fue poco después de cumplir 18 años. It oh. was a little after he turned 18. Did he practice with those yes. often? Eh, al principio fue dos o tres veces al, al lugar donde podía practicar. Ah, at the beginning he went two or three times to the place where he could practice. I have no more questions then. No more questions. Really. All right. Uh, I just have a couple of questions. Yes, if there's no objection. No All right. Why did you allow your son to drop out of high school? Yo permití que saliera de la escuela porque estaba planeando hacer el examen para tener su diploma más. I allowed him to drop out of school because he was planning to take the test to get his diploma quicker. All right. Now, are you aware he never did that? Yes, I, yes, I know. He started working and he said he would be doing it at the same time, but then the problem happened. All right. And do you have any weapons in your home now? No. No. All right. Any other questions? No. All right. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, any other witnesses? No, ma'am. Any witnesses? Just argue, ma'am. All right. So before we get to the mm -hmm. argument part, I can tell you both this is a very difficult case for me because he's young. I see that there's some mental health issues, but I also have some concerns about the safety of the public. So what I would like, if it is possible for the state or somebody, the witness in the police report is always reread the person that he sent this to, is it possible to have them available in person or by Zoom by the 21st? I can look into that okay. All right. Will there be any objection if they can only get the witness by Zoom? In fact, Your Honor, I was going to call her last night because my understanding in speaking to my client is that she wants to come testify on his behalf. But I didn't want to call her because I didn't want it to be, even though I know I'm allowed to speak to witnesses, but there's also a protective order. And I didn't want it to look like I am calling her on behalf of him. And then he gets arrested for a violation of a protective order. So I thought she was going to be here this morning. All right. But yes, ma'am. So um, I'm going to recall this case for um, September 21st. We can go off the record. Mr. Cisneros, I know there's a medical issue with your wife. Is that uh, a good time? And state, I'm saying the 21st because I think maybe that'll give you more chance to get your witness. But if you can get your witness sooner, and you all want to bring it back sooner than the 21st, just let Ms. Ferguson know the only time that is not good would be on Wednesday the 20th. I'll, I'll say September 21st, but if you all are able to get here, her here on the 18th, um, just let Ms. Ferguson know and we'll put it down for that day. And the PSI report shows that they've been trying to contact her and she wasn't responding. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 2022 CR 10364 State of Texas versus Christopher Lee Gonzalez. This is a request for removal of GPS. The court will note that the defendant has been on GPS for over two years with no violations. 
um, the court is going to grant the order to remove the GPS, but the GPS will be removed on allowed to be removed on September 22nd. Would I give you time enough to get in touch with the complainant and let them know that the GPS is being removed? There should be enough time, sure. All right. All right, Mr. Gonzalez, if you violate the no contact order, what will end up happening is the court will receive a notice. And once I receive that notice, we will have a hearing. And based upon what I hear, you may or may not be hearing your case from the Bear County Jail. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right, so you all are due back here on the 19th. Yes, on Tuesday, Judge. Yes. We we're asking for a reset. All right. As uh, the state continues to uh, look and talk to their complainant. All right, if you all will get, with, get to me a motion for continuance, mm -hmm. then the court will sign it. Okay, I'll get that to you, Your Honor. All right, is there anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Honor. Have a good day. Thank you.